Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number 5, Ontological Engineering for Smarter Knowledge Graphs. Today we are going to take a look beyond the limits of OWL. So you know, now we are above the OWL level. We are, looked at, we are looking at logics and at rules. So, let's start. If we are going beyond OWL, we have to look at examples that we can't express with the help of OWL. Look at the simple example that we are giving here. Let me just switch on my laser pointer and you see here the example a younger sibling of X is a sibling that is younger than X. How should we do that in OWL? Of course we could define that Paul is younger than Mary and we could also define that Paul is a sibling of Mary. But if we want to define a younger sibling of as a property, as an object property, we have no idea how exactly to do that. One of the problems we have here is we would have to need a constructor to create an intersection of properties, which is of course not allowed. So OWL does not provide any way to entail a property intersection here. So that's not possible. However, more expressivity also means more complexity. And finally, in the end, this might lead to undecidability for, as for example, for first order logic. And this is, of course, something we don't want to have. Now, the question is, do we really need more expressivity than OWL DL offers? Now, ah, probably sometimes yes. So consider the following simple example. A squanderer is a person whose expenses are higher than their income. How to do that? Of course, we could define a squanderer to be a subclass of person. And of course, it's somebody who has expenses and it's somebody who has an income. But to relate all these things together, we would need a constructor to combine classes and properties at the same time while looking at the individual. Yeah. And by that, what we would do is we would mix T-box and A-box. And this, of course, is also not possible here in the strict sense of a description logics knowledge base. However, if we would take into account first order logic rules, we could simply create it. We could say a person, so X is a person and X has income Y and X has expenses Z. And then we could include, yeah, Z should be larger or greater than Y. And then we could deduce, yeah, this implies that X is a squanderer. If you don't want to have this arithmetics in your, in your formula, simply then take the equivalent property which is greater than Z and Y and this would mean exactly the same. So with first order logic that would be possible, but with first order logic of course we are losing um, decidability. And that of course would be bad for our purposes. So what to do? However, let's have a look at rules and then see what we can do with it with respect to our semantic web technology. So far, th the semantic web focuses on declarative forms of knowledge representation, like description logics, OWL, RDFS. Rules, on the other end, are a common form of procedural knowledge representation. It's a procedure. You have strictly this if-then part. And this is, a, of course, also commonly known in knowledge engineering, like, for example, in expert systems or prolog programs. So, how does a rule look like? So it's like in a programming language, you have a condition. If this condition holds, then of course follows another part B. Or you can simply write this as an implication and it starts here with a premise and it follows a conclusion. So far, so good. A special case of rules that has to be considered here are the so-called so horn clauses. These are rules as first order logic implications. How do they look like? They consist usually of a body and all of the atoms you have here in the body, they are conjunctively connected. And then you have here uh, after the implication a head H. And all of these A sub I and also H are atomic formulas. Of course if you want to you can also write it the other way around that you have here all negated atomic A's and they are connect, uh, connected disjunctively. So this would be logically exactly the same, but then instead of an implication, you would have here also a disjunction. So these are the typical horn clauses that you might have already met when you're doing logic. But they can be written here also that's equivalent as a rule. So they have a logical syntactical equivalency here. 
quantification for these rules is most times omitted, but of course all free variables usually are considered to be universally quantified. And this is the case because simply the rule, of course, should hold for all possible assignments, so we consider always a universally quantified variable there. Many times when you counter uh, rules, you will see them also the other way around expressed, that they start with the head, but then of course the implication arrow points always to the head and then the body follows. So it's often written from right to left, so the other way around. Okay, go back to our example. Our example, of course, can be expressed as an FOL rule. And you see here the blue part, this is all conjunctions. And then this implies here another thing, which is then the head. So here we have the body of our horn claws and here we have the head. So this can easily be expressed. Okay, so rules are usually considered to apply only on known constants. What they cannot do is, of course, we have not the possibility to create new things simply on the fly, like we do this, for example, with extensional quantification. Look at this nice example that we have here. So I have to switch on my laser pointer again. And here you see we create a human as somebody who has also human parents. And for that, of course, for each instance you have there, you could create another version of, you know, there exists, of course, something which is the parent, and there exists something again which is the parent of the parent. And again, and, and this is human. So this would be rather interesting, but unfortunately not possible with rules. So this is also um, kind of a distinction that we have also from open world and closed world. So rules like they are used in uh, expert systems they are considering a closed world so what's not there is they're given as being you know false and it's assumed to be false so here open world and closed world they collide and therefore um, this thing so we can't combine it in that way so if rules are considered first order logic formulas then Combining rules with a con uh, description logic like ALC, which is the simplest one that we know or that we have dealt with so far, that leads to undecidability. This is something we don't want because then it might be that, of course, we have a reasoner that is, you know, then applied on some logical or rule based uh, formulas that we have created here, and then it will never stop while trying to find out whether there is something to infer from it. So, what about decidable first order logical rules? Can we somehow restrict our constructors that we have in description logics to keep rules decidable? That's possible. And the solution is called data log. You might have heard of that. So, looking at data log, data log is a logical rule long language that consists of horn clauses without function symbols. Function symbols are not allowed. And the only thing which is allowed is conjunction, constants, universally qualified variables, and predicate symbols. What is not allowed, the other side, is disjunction, negation, existential quantification, and function symbols. Simply to keep the thing closed and small and so that you can't create things on that, don't have to create things on the flight. Originally, this was developed also already a long time ago in 1978 for as foundation for so-called deductive databases. And knowledge bases here in that sense are data log programs. They are sets of horn clauses without function symbols again. Data log is decidable and computationally efficient. Yeah, it's of course, you know, it runs in exponential time, so this is already a lot. However, it's decidable, and this is, of course, the great plus point here. And it's really simple. Let's have a look at the data log syntax. What do we have there? We are looking at terms which are constant C or variables V we are talking about. Then we define data log atom, which is here, for example, a predicate. And this predicate is applied to a number of terms, T sub 1 to T sub n. And then we have also complete rules. And these rules look like, so we have here universal quantification of the variables x sub 1 to x sub n. And then we have here our rule which consists here of a body consisting of um, atoms b1 to bn. And then we have the implication and the head, which is also an atom. 
And then a data log program is nothing else but a set of data log rules. So that's quite simple. Let's have a look at some examples. First examples, so if X is a vegetarian and Y is a fish product, then X dislikes Y. That's a very nice data log rule. And it's quite handy because what you combine here is you have here a class expression, another class expression by which you define uh, a property. Let's look at the next one. Ordered, so if X has ordered dish Y and X dislikes Y, this means that X is unhappy. Also, a data log example and of course what we did here, we combine two properties with each other and define by that a new class, unhappy. Or if I say, if X has ordered dish Y, then Y is a dish. Combination of property and class. Let's make it a bit more complicated. So if X dislikes Y, uh, no, sorry, if S dislikes set and Y is a dish and Y contains set, then X dislikes Y. Wow, that's already complicated because on the one hand side you combine already properties and class and then you define a property by that. Another thing here, uh, vegetarian is a, uh, uh, Matthias is a vegetarian. This is how we define a fact in, uh, with the help of a role. We only state here the, the other part or the head part of the, of the rule, which holds under all conditions, no matter whether this is uh, true or false. So um, this is how I state a fact that Matthias is a vegetarian. On the other hand, if I say here, for example, uh, X is happy and X is unhappy, then of course I leave out the head part because this is always wrong because this leads to, yeah, here, um, a contradiction in that sense. So, data log rules allow mixing of classes and relations, so this means unary and binary predicates and therefore it's much more expressive than description logics. We have seen this here already. And the interesting thing for us is that if we combine data log with a fragment of OWL, we end up in a language which is called SWIRL. And SWIRL is the semantic web rule language and about that we will talk in the excursion which follows next.